the nucleus? No, do you see the nucleus? Oh, you might be seeing a nucleus. Well, what else do you see? What else do you see inside the cell? No, no, don't look at the board, look at the cell. What do you see? I'm John Burkett. I teach the biology blocks, wow. 9 through 12, uh, as well as an honors biology elective in the senior year, and the gardening classes. And I'm Paolo Carini, and I teach physics and astronomy in 11th grade as part of our science and an elective of modern physics in the senior year. Basically any student who comes to the high school here gets a full year of chemistry, a full year of earth science, full year of physics, and a full year of biology spread over four years. In any other high school that I know of, uh, biology is usually just 10th grade, chemistry is maybe 11th grade, and if there's physics at all for a student, it's either 11th or 12th grade. So our students get a full range of sciences. I think that's pretty unique. For example, we could mention what we call main lesson, which is where many of the subjects are taught, all the subjects of biology and physics are taught in main lesson, which is a block system of three to four weeks where the students every day for about two hours a day experience the same subject. The idea is that during that time, students become scientists. So they are really totally focused. And this continuity uh, experienced by the students is very, very powerful. W what is really astronomy, okay, is training the students to be able to see phenomena from different points of view. Can you develop that ability to step out of your own self and look from the point of view of someone else? And science is not finished. It's a work in progress, and scientists continue to ask questions. What I think is unique in the in, in world of education is that all the elements connect to each other. So it's not like uh, I bring out a question just because it's interesting in itself, but every question connects to the other questions. And in some way, you end up with something that is uh, harmonious, that is, looks like a whole at the end. This is a much deeper learning uh, whether you are going to be a scientist or not. So it's a lifelong skill. I have in 10th grade students building projectile launchers as they study parabolic motion and projectile motion and have competitions to see which one succeeds in sending the, the projectile into the bucket in the least amount of attempts. In botany, one of the main uh, assignments is uh, students pick a plant that they're particularly interested in and they thoroughly research everything they can find out about the plant, but a, a large component is also what I call an artistic activity. It can be a poem, it can be a song, it can be something they cook. In ninth grade, they build steam engines from scratch. All these projects are actually built from scratch. In 11th grade, they learn how to do electric motors and how the uh, generators work, which is what brings us electricity in the house. So they build this uh, from scratch. That requires a good deal of creativity and ingenuity. These students come out with so much confidence and so much understanding, like a broad and deep understanding of the world. And one of the things that I really care is that students don't come out of high school and say, I've done with this, I've done with physics, I don't want to know anything about it. You know? That would break my heart. I mean, that's not my goal. You know? I would like to have students who can say, no, I'm going to become a lawyer, but I go to a library, pick up this popular book about physics. I want to know more about Einstein and Bohr or something. They come out with, the, with the, still a fascination for what they've learned, with the openness. If there is that interest and that curiosity, that's, that's valuable, very valuable.